Previously, we have seen that electron shells are divided into subshells, which are further divided into individual orbitals. Each individual orbital can hold up to two electrons. To determine the correct electronic configuration of an atom, we must know how to fill electrons in each orbital. We have already seen how Pauli's exclusion principle and Hund's rule can be applied. We must also determine in which order these subshells will be filled with electrons. Another rule is that electrons will first occupy orbitals of lowest energy. Since these individual orbitals are contained within subshells, we can compare the energy of the subshells. The energy of the subshells can be compared by comparing their n plus l values. The lower the n plus l value, the lower the energy of the subshell. So we can start filling the orbital of the 1s subshell followed by the 2s. Now we've reached the 2p, but if we calculate the n plus l value for the 2p and 3s subshells, we would see that the n plus l values for both these subshells are equal to 3. So the question is, which subshell do we fill first? the 2p or the 3s? Well, the guideline is that orbitals or subshells with equal values of n plus l will fill with a lower n value first. So since n is equal to 3 for the 3s subshell and n is equal to 2 for the 2p subshell, we fill the 2p first. So we have three rules which govern the way and the order in which electrons are filled into orbitals. These three rules make up the off bore principle. When we apply the off bore principle, the order in which electrons are placed into subshells is shown below. This order can be determined by the n plus l values for each subshell and then placing them in the appropriate order. That process can be a bit time consuming, but luckily, the order can be derived from a simple table shown here. The table shown here consists of five columns and nine rows. In the first column, we have the values for the principal quantum number n listed from 1 to 8. In the first row, we have the values for the azimuthal quantum number L listed from 0 to 3. The table is then filled with the subshells that correspond to the N and L values as shown. To determine the order in which electrons are filled into subshells, we start with a 1s. And then we follow the arrows. 
So after the 1S, we follow the first arrow. Doing so will take us to the 2S subshell. Now if we follow the arrow, we will end up at the N equals 3 value. Now when you hit an N value, you simply continue following the next arrow. This would take us to the 2P, followed by the 3S, and if we continue along that line, we will then hit the N equal 4 value. So we have to continue with the next arrow. Doing so will take us to the, to the 3P, followed by the 4S, after which we will then encounter the n equal 5 value. So again, we must continue with the next arrow. So to read the table, you just follow the arrows and when you hit an n value, you just continue following the next arrow. In doing so, you will be able to reproduce the list below. Now this will take some practice so I would advise that you use the table to make the list below about two or three times until you get the hang of it. If in doubt about the order, you can always calculate the N plus L values of the subshells. So if you are able to reproduce this table, you will be able to reproduce the list beneath it, which tells us the order in which to fill the subshells with electrons. In lecture 1.3.3, I have given a handy tip on how to draw this table accurately, so you should check that out. So now that the order in which to fill the subshells is known, all that remains is memorizing how large each subshell is. So this is all that is needed to determine the electronic configuration of a stable atom of an element.